In this short video, we are going to show you how to specify a flexible diaphragm and incorporate nodal loads into your model. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my diaphragm assignment. So I'm going to proceed to RAM frame. Within RAM frame, I'm going to select now criteria followed by diaphragm. And I'm going to select my first floor to be a rigid diaphragm, but on my second floor, I'm going to say it's a flexible or no diaphragm. Now, what the program is telling me that if I have a level that has been set to flexible, that the program will not be able to calculate story forces for me. So it'll be my responsibility to incorporate user-specified nodal loads into the model at those levels for any type of lateral load to be considered. Now, before I start modeling my nodal loads, let me also go ahead and just quickly take a look at my load cases that I have in this model. Now for this particular model, I'm going to go ahead and apply seismic load with no eccentricity. Now since the only level that contains a diaphragm is my first floor level, story forces will be applied and calculated for the first floor, but not for the roof level of my structure. So what I need to do is I need to be able to tell the program what those notional loads are or those nodal loads. I need to model them, and then I need to find a way to combine them with the story forces that are going to be applied at the first floor level. So let me exit out of RAM frame, and I'm going to proceed to the RAM modeler at this point. Now again, my lateral system has already been completely created. Now in order to model nodal loads, I need to enter the program in elevation mode, looking at one of those frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a shear wall along grid line one. So I'm going to select the elevation view, and then I'm going to select any line of lateral members, and I'm going to click on my shear wall somewhere basically along grid line one. And we're going to be able to see an elevation of that wall. Then what I need to do is I need to basically create some property tables. I need to tell the program what nodal load cases I'm going to have. I need to populate those load cases with the actual nodal loads, and then I need to model them on my structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two different notional load cases or nodal load cases that are going to correspond with my seismic load in my X and Y direction that I saw that I generated in RAM frame. So to start that process, I'm going to click on the layout loads icon, and then I'm going to select the first icon that appears after that, which are my nodal load cases. For this model, I'm going to create a seismic load in my X direction. I'm going to tell the program that this is seismic. We'll click the Add button. And I'll select a seismic load in my Y direction as well. Now, in a realistic structure, you may have more load cases than that. You may be also generating some wind load cases or anything else that you're going to need for your model. For this model, for simplicity, we just took two seismic load cases. Now that I've identified my two seismic load cases, I need to go a step further and calculate my nodal loads. Now, this is something I'm going to have to do by hand to calculate the magnitudes of my loads. And I'm going to come up here and populate basically a property table. So I'm going to select my nodal loads icon. And then I can start entering some information. So here I'm going to say for my brace frame, seismic load in my X direction. It's good to give a nice label that helps you identify it. I'm going to say my FX load, I've calculated it, and it's about 1.2 kips. For my shear wall, I've calculated my seismic load in my Y direction. And I'm going to enter my FY at 1.2 kips. And for my moment frame, which will be helping resist seismic loads in my Y direction, I've calculated it at 0.6 kips. We'll click the Add button. Now, my moment frame has more nodes along the top, so I basically calculated the overall seismic force and basically divided it by the four nodes I'm going to apply it to. So once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we are ready for the final step, which is actually modeling the nodal loads. So to do that, we're going to access this last icon. 
which is our nodal loads icon. And here I need to select my load case. So I'm working with seismic load in my Y direction because that's what my shear wall is resisting. I'm going to go with my shear wall force. And then we'll go ahead and click on the add button. And we're going to apply it at the roof level. Now I'm not applying anything at the typical level because I do have a diaphragm for that level. Now I'm done with this shear wall, so I'm going to return back to my plan view. And let's go ahead and add some forces for our moment frame. So again, I'm going to click on the nodal loads icon. I'm going to identify my seismic in my Y direction. And here I'm going to select my force. I'm going to click the add button. And then I'm going to click on each of the nodes at the top of this brace, at this moment frame. I'm going to return to the plan view and I'm going to do the same thing for both of my braced frames. This time for seismic load in my X direction. This completes the process for modeling my nodal loads. And there's one last thing I want to take a look at, is what I need to do is I need to tell the program that I want to combine these loads with my loads that were generated for my first floor, that were generated by RAM frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and enter RAM frame. Now we've already specified our diaphragms at each level. We have a rigid diaphragm at the first floor level, flexible at the roof. And what we want to do is we want to merge our load cases together. So we want to merge our calculated loads that were calculated by RAM frame with those that we manually specified in the RAM modeler to make sure that the loads at the roof and the typical floor level are both being considered in the analysis. So to do this, we're going to go to loads. And then we're going to say merge load cases. And what we're going to call this is my label will be, I'll call it seismic X merge. It's a seismic load. So you can see when I turn it to seismic, it'll grab the notional loads or also the code loads that were defined as seismic. And I'm going to say we're going to grab the seismic load in the X direction that was generated by RAM frame with the nodal load seismic X that I identified. We'll go ahead and click the add button and now we have a merged load case. I'm gonna do this the same thing for the Y direction. Grab this load case and this load case and we'll go ahead and click add. So now at this point, the last thing I just need to do is go ahead and analyze the model. And you can see here, now it's giving me the option to analyze the merged load case. So if I wanted to take a look at some of my results, I could go ahead and say process, followed by results. And I could say applied story forces. Uh, let's go with the Y direction display and we'll click apply. So here I can see my seismic load that was added at my typical first floor level that was generated by RAM frame. It's being applied at the center of mass of my diaphragm because I have no eccentricity there. And then I can see it being added with the nodal loads at the roof level. Now, this approach is only really applicable if you want to use that flexible diaphragm option. As an alternative, RAM frame does allow you to apply a pseudo flexible diaphragm. And in that case, the program will still be able to calculate the story forces for you. For a flexible diaphragm, RAM frame cannot calculate the story forces, so you have to manually put them in. Both ways are a way of basically achieving a flexible diaphragm analysis or approach in RAM frame. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.